I've had a lot of questions about how I warm my dogs up before I work them. So I'm gonna go through it today, exactly what I do, both at a trial and at home. And really it's a five step process. And when I was thinking about this five steps, uh, I came up with a handy little acronym that will describe those five steps and that is WADA the WADA warm up. Okay, so, and really it comes down to, I warm my dog up, I go through an array of movements with them before I take them to a jump and I do some value testing at the jump and then I build some trust and confidence back in before I go ahead and uh, the last step I do before I go into the ring is I build some awareness both for him and his body and the two of us as a team. That's really the last step. So all of the warm ups that I do, I, I do on a leash and I love this leash. And this is a leash that you can get at uh, formymerals.com. This is actually a Handling 360 leash. Um, they have a, a, a number of uh, really cool leashes. I like this leash, come here, Wag because it's all in one. So I am never stuck leaving my dog's collar on when I'm running and it slips right on and off really easy. So it doesn't bother the dog when they're at the start line. Can you get in and sit? You know, it just comes off. There's no fussing with the dog at that. Plus it can be used for a number of things as you'll see in my warm up. So the first stage, my W, warm the dog's muscles. Now it depends on how warm the temperature is outside, how long this may last. It, it could last um, actually two or three minutes, it could last five minutes. It really depends on A, did I put my dog's back on track coats on? I really love the back on track, call me superstitious, but I think they really work and I always use them at trials. It doesn't matter how hot or how cold my dogs have their back on track coats on. The odd time I'll forget just so that it isn't a superstition to me, um, I'll do a, a little bit extra walking outside with them. Let them relieve themselves, make sure that their muscles are warm. I don't do any ball throwing or frisbee. I don't want them ripping. I want them warming up. So I don't want them to, to start accelerating with their muscles before they're properly warmed. So warm my dog's uh, muscles up, um, let them relieve themselves. And then I go back inside now. And the rest of this warm up is really going to depend upon where you are at the trial how big an area that you have. Is it a really tight, tight crating? Can you go outside to do your warm up? There's a lot of things that will depend. I'm gonna show you in my ideal situation um, how I would warm my dog up. I like to go and get my dog about 20 dogs before they have to run. Now that number might get bigger, say at a world championship, that, that will go to at least 30 dogs before my run because it's a longer way to go um, and they want you there at the ringside earlier. But 20 dogs is my normal. If it's a standard class that's not going so quick, I might get it down to 15, but it would not be any later than that. So 20 dogs is my, I'll pick a marker dog right around that, that 15 mark, mark. And then I'll go get my dog. Um, so I'm into my array of movements. And that really is, I want my dog to get limber and loose and all and throughout their whole body. So I'll do, um, the first thing I do is, is just warming them up on leash. This is a good warm up for me as well. Here, Wags. And all I do is your basic circle work. I have my leash over my neck so that I can uh, have my hands free. Um, and I don't make my circles too big because remember I'm at a trial. Get my close. I, I do the same warm up when I'm at home. So I'll just be running in a circle, rewarding them in reinforcement zone, dog on left, dog on right. And I'll also do circles inside. And if I'm really tight for time, like at the smaller trials, I have to um, do both feature and swagger at the same time. So I'll just get them both in and do my circle work together. So that's the first thing. I'll do how much of that? I don't know, a minute or two until I'm winded maybe. Um, and then I go to my next thing. Again, I like to do this off leash, but if it's tight quarters at a trial, I might not be able to. But let's say it's my ideal situation. Um, I'm going to do this. You'll notice with Swagger, I almost exclusively use food down to, to warm him up. You decide based on the needs of your dog. If you're not sure and it's your first trial, start with food first because toys tend to get them over aroused and maybe not as quite as thoughtful about their body. So I'll use food for almost his entire warm up until the very end. Feature I use mostly toys and a little bit of food. Okay, so I'm on my array of movements. I've done my circle work. Come here. Do some backup, reward him. Yeah, I'll move that. I'm not gonna do much of it because 
you know, we got a tight area, pretty. So this is some more array of movements. So he broke out of his pretty. I'll pick that up. Come on, let's do that again. I want to do some it's your choice because I need him listening to me in the ring. Back, pretty. Throw my cookie. He needs to hold that. Break. Good. All right, so I'll do little exercises like that. I'll do some, um, come here. <laughs> Get in here, pretty. Tall, pretty. So these are for strength, warming them up. And then I'll go to a garbage can. Love, every child's got a garbage can. And I'll just do some circling around that can. Uh, na, 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 na. Warm the dog up that way, both directions. Na, 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 na. Get it, good. All right, and then I'll do independent paw movement. So sit. It would be lift one front paw, lift the other front paw. It could be down, crossing one, crossing the other. That's kind of lame. I need you to go better. There you go. All right, so just warming him up with his front, front end. Good. Break, can you stand? And then I'll do stretch and stretch. That's good. I'm looking to see if he's tight in one direction or another. Got to grab some more cookies. I'm, I'm not stretching him. This is a really important thing you need to know. I am not pulling out my dog's legs. I am not pulling my dog up in the air. I am letting him stretch based on his, how, how tight he feels. It gives me an evaluation. Are you sore somewhere? Do I need to get you to a massage therapist or a chiropractor before I run? Okay, and then the last one is I want him reaching forward. Get those hamstrings warmed up a little bit. Good. I'll then go to a wall and maybe get him to stand up on a wall. Hop it up here so that he reaches up, right? Standing up, stretching. I'll do the same thing. Let's say this is a wall here. Soup, soup. Yes, good. So we pretend that's a wall. Um, I like to do those back stretches against a wall as well. And I might do two side paws on a wall um, and two other side paws on a wall. So they're down. I've done a lot of a different array of movement set to continue to warm the dog up, but also let him become aware of his body. Before, uh, the last thing that I'll do is some regular puppy stretches. Come here, get in. So I'll get him in here. I'll put a cookie on his hip, put a cookie on his neck. Get, just get that stretching. Put a cookie on his hock. So I've got stretching on different angles. Of course, I'll do that on both sides. And one down here. And then I'll do a stretch forward this way, pull, holding onto his hocks. And the last thing I do is a pretzel, is a stretch so that he holds that nice stretch underneath. I'm not done. Thank you. Break. Okay, so now I'm ready to move to my warm up jump. I've done all my array of, of stretching and proprioception with him. I'm ready to go and Build, just continue this process with a low height warm up jump. Okay, buddy, let's go to the jump. Now I've moved over to the warm up jump area. You don't want to hog this area, so be respectful of if there's people standing in line, you're, you might have to make this quick. If you've got a little extra time, then take some time at the lower height. I always start low. Come here. And I'll just do some. Yes, going in both directions. Oh, it was right here, buddy. Good. Do that on both wings. Okay. This is about just limbering them up over the jump. We'll do the same thing a little bit higher. Good. And na 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 na. There you go. Now I'm going to move on to testing, right? I'm going to be testing his understanding. I'll be moving the jump up to his full height. One of the things I used to do with Encore all the time is I used my nice thick leash. Come here, buddy. As a step in, get, side, get up my side. As a step in, much like it was a set point, if it was a V of a set point. So here is where I will use a toy. Um, sometimes I'll use a cookie, depending on how high he is, just to have a nice, quiet jump. Break. There we go. So I would have preferred to seen him step in there. Ouch. Thank you. Go line up. It's a nice skill to have when you... I need you over this way. Thank you. 
break. Good. Okay, so that is to now to build him up his confidence. Now I'm gonna test him. And thank you. Out. So here I'll get him jacked up the way he'll be in a ring. I'll get him all excited. I'm gonna do things that are going to be difficult that maybe the bar will fall down. Uh, la 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 la. Good boy. Yeah. And thank you. Out. Ready? Uh, na, 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 na. Trying to see if I can get him to make a mistake. One of the ones that often works, thank you, out, is sending and leaving. So I'm going to send and take off running. And then, what? Wee! Good boy. Thank you, out. Send this way. This time I'm going to call him. Woo! Good boy. Okay, so it gets difficult to get him to knock a bar. Thank you. Right? Because we do this so much. Okay, so I'll do things like come jump. Good. Ready? Back. Come jump. Yay. Oops, I don't think so. So eventually I will get him to knock a bar. Sometimes it's harder than other times. Put that back up. I don't say anything to him. I just don't let him have the toy. I'll try that again. Come jump. Uh -huh. That wasn't it. I know it was a harder one. Back there. Come jump. Yay, good boy. That's so good. <laughs> That's not so much. I know. So you can see he's panting a little harder. His eyes are getting a bit wider. He's getting a little bit anxious because he's made a couple mistakes. Do one more. Come jump. Whee! Good boy. That's so good. Now I'm going to move into down the trust and confidence. I was able to have a mistake here at the jump. Before I go into the ring, I don't want my dog worrying. I don't want him being anxious and stressed. So can I have the thing? Thank you. Out. I'll likely not use my toy for this part. I'll likely go back to using food, and I'm going to do things that I know he can do well. Check, 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 check. Good. If there is a particular handling move in the class that I want him to do well, I'll do that. A la 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 la. Good. Good. And that pretty much is it for my warm up jump. I make sure I do go have my dog turning to the right and turning to the left. I'm going now to get in the queue and get ready to go in the ring. All right, so put my leash back on. So now I know I'm probably three to five minutes away from my turn the ring. I like, because I see his tongue hanging out, I, I'll go back to my crate, I'll give him a little drink of water, I'll take a drink of water myself, and the last things that I'll do when I'm building that, that bond, that awareness between the two of us, um, so I'll give him long body stroke down, all the way down to his, each toe, and I'll pick up his feet he doesn't like this one in particular being done, which is why he's going to stand up. I'm not going to let you do that, though, buddy. Can you sit? Swag. Thank you. Sit. Swagger. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. Swagger's got, this toe is a little bit sore. So I just do some flexion, rub out his toes. This brings awareness to his feet. Put my feet be between all of his pads. Also, if he's got a jam toe after our warm-up, I'm making sure that he doesn't go into the ring with that jam toe. It's really good. Now I'll do his back stand. So long strokes just brings awareness to his back body, back part of his body. Do you hear that little crack? That was a toe that got jammed during our warm-up. Pick it up again. There we go. Okay, so now I've I've worked on his toes. I'll do these little twings, I don't know what you call them, a little twig of his hawk. Tweak of his hawk. And now I'm gonna go back into line. I'm probably really close to my turn. Can you get in? This is the last thing I like to do with him. Just bring awareness of his back end to, him, to, his, to his braid. Sit, stand, sit, good. So just getting that up and down action. Stand, good, sit, 
Nice. And my final thing that I go in, before I go into the ring, I mentally bring the two of us together. So I stroke him all over again. I put my hand under his chest, one hand on here, and I just visualize that our energies are going together. This is kind of voodoo, hoo -ha, a little bit of uh, uh, voodoo for some of you. Visualize that we're, our energies are going together down to the bottom of the earth, grounding us together to, right at the core of the earth so that we are gonna go in the ring as a team. Okay, so when I'm doing that, I'm taking a really deep breath all the way to the bottom of my lungs. Why is that good? Because I am an athlete too. I have to get in there and run. I want blood all the way down through my body. Okay, one of the things I like to do, come up here, bud. While we're waiting in the ring, get him to stretch out again. Get him to stretch all the way up. So stretching up and the awareness of the back end. And before you know it, it's our turn to go in the ring and our warm up is done. <laughs>